So now onto the CPU coolers. Now, your CPU cooler under normal load tasks will generate heat, but this is especially true under high load tasks such as gaming. It's the role of the CPU cooler to keep your CPU temperature within a specified range to allow it to operate efficiently and reliably. So what's in the box for each of these CPU coolers purchased? So generally we have the heatsink itself, we have a series of bolts, We've got the mounting brackets for both in front of and behind the motherboard, some other additional adapter brackets, and in this as well we've also got some thermal paste to go between the cooler and the CPU itself. So what's in the box for this CPU cooler? We've got the CPU cooler itself, we've got the mounting brackets for both the back and the front of the motherboard, we've got the retaining brackets for the second uh, CPU cooler fan, We've got some thermal paste, the user guides, the bolts, and some cables here to either split or slow down the fans to reduce noise. So the efficiency of a cooler is dependent on the amount of surface area the heat sink has to dissipate heat. The larger the surface area, generally the larger the cooler, and if you have a larger surface area with a large or several fans, you can control the high temperatures much more efficiently. Another bonus is as the cooler is more efficient, at lower loads you don't require high fan speeds to keep the heatsink surfaces cool, resulting in a cooler and quieter computer overall. A small CPU cooler with limited surface area can only increase the fan speed so much in order to control temperatures, and when the limit is reached the CPU will begin to limit its processing and heat generated to ensure it doesn't damage itself. If you are keeping a CPU within manufacturer specifications, a stock cooler is fine, but where you tend to overclock it, increasing the speed and hence heat generated, you need to upgrade to ensure you don't hit this thermal limit. The installation of these larger coolers is usually more involved with brackets required on both sides of the motherboard to support their weight. So another consideration is also water cooling, which is generally a more involved installation, but is also generally more efficient due to the cooling type used. Now we find for general gaming PCs the air cooling solution is fine, um, but water cooling in certain instances, especially with higher overclock computers, can be quite useful. Uh, we'll discuss water cooling in detail in a later video. So if you'd like to learn more, jump over to our website at easypcbuilder.com where you can download our monthly updated build guides for gaming PCs of various levels, office PCs and media PCs, and you can also download our Easy PC Builder Master Course. Thanks for watching.